Okay. A uh, good afternoon, everybody. So, in the last lecture, we just talked about course outline. What are we going to cover in the course? And uh, just a few minutes back, we also discussed about what will be the grading style. And in the course outline, we did mention about what are the fundamentals of antennas. And then we talked very briefly about dipole antenna, monopole antenna, antenna array, microstrip antenna, helical antenna, horn antenna, reflector antenna, log periodic, and Yagi Guda antenna. Okay. So today we will uh, focus on antenna fundamentals. So antennas are generally defined by its frequency, at what frequency you want to operate the antenna. So it is very important that you understand at what frequency you want to operate. But then the major important thing for an antenna is what is the radiation pattern desired for a given application. So you need to understand what is the application and what is the radiation pattern desired. So there are three main categories of radiation pattern. The first one here is an isotropic antenna. Isotropic antenna radiates equally in all the directions. Okay. Uh, in reality, isotropic antenna does not exist. However, there is a lot of research going on where they are trying to make an isotropic antenna and the name given is quasi-isotropic antenna. The second one which I have shown here, that is a omni radiation pattern or omnidirectional pattern. Uh, I have given the pattern for a typical lambda by two dipole antenna. And as I did mention in the last lecture, but let's have another way. Suppose if this is a dipole antenna, you can see the full length. This side also you can see the full length. I can also see the full length. So that means in this particular direction, all of us can see the equal length. That means it's a maximum radiation. And if you move from here, keep going to the top, you only see the tip, which is really speaking a very little radiation. And as you move along the angle, you are actually seeing just the projection of the antenna. So as you can see here, it is a donut shape, but with the hollow donut, okay? So there is a no radiation in the vertical up direction. Maximum radiation is perpendicular to the dipole and as you are going up. So the colors here indicate the radiation intensity. So red color is for maximum radiation and then yellow and then green, blue. In fact, as many a times we follow the convention of Vib Gyor, okay? That is violet, indigo, blue, up to all the way to red, okay? And uh, you should know that red has a largest wavelength, okay? So it can actually travel much more distance and then in the reverse way all the other colors follow and that is why traffic lights generally use red color then yellow and then green so it is the follow-up of the web gear so in fact when you are making slides also i do recommend that you follow the trend that uh, something which you want to highlight in your presentation you can use red color and then accordingly follow the web gear and go through the different color scheme. Okay, the third one here, uh, this is uh, what we have shown here is a microstrip antenna array. Uh, down here, there is a waveguide. So it's a waveguide fed microstrip antenna array. Uh, this we have designed at IIT Bombay. And uh, this particular thing gives a gain of about 27 dB. I'll just mention that also, but what you see here that the radiation in mainly directional, you can see that the beam width is very narrow and it has a lot of side lobes uh, which are present in this particular array. And many a times requirements are that these side lobe levels should be very small. Ideally, it should not be there, but practically these will always be there. So we would prefer a side lobe level of less than 20 dB, but you don't have too much control many a times and sometimes you can control. Uh, just to give you some numbers also, so what is directivity, which I'll show the exact definition, but I think you all know a little bit about it. So directivity of isotropic antenna is defined as one which is radiating equally in all the direction. And for that is the numeric value is one, you have to take 10 log D, and if you take 10 log one, which is zero dB. Then the second one here, which is a dipole antenna, the directivity is 1.64. What does that really mean? That 
the radiation in the maximum direction divided by if it had radiated uniformly in all the direction. So it's the ratio of the maximum radiation by this one. So you don't define directivity. Suppose if you just look into the vertical direction, then what will be directivity? Actually zero, okay? So you don't define. So generally the definition of directivity is direction in which there is a maximum radiation, okay? And the third case here is, uh, so here for dipole also directivity is 1.64. You take 10 log, which is about 2.1 dB. Now then the third case here, uh, we have an array of 13 by 13 elements. And uh, for this, the directivity is 500. Again, you take 10 log, it is 27 dB. So you can see that you require a large aperture to realize larger gain. Now this is 3D pattern. Many a times we try to make things simple and we show 2D radiation pattern. Now I had shown this particular pattern in the previous lecture, but we'll repeat one more time. So what we have here, now this, but this is a directional radiation pattern. So the red line is a major low and all these other small ones are known as minor low. Right next to the main lobe are known as side lobe. In the back direction, they are known as back lobe radiation, okay? So we define a few quantities. One is the half power beam width, which is very, very important. And what is half power beam width? It actually indicates that what is the half power radiated in the angle over which the radiation is. So in this particular case here, maximum radiation is towards Z direction. And this is the portion over which beam width is reduced by 50%. So then the next thing is first null beam width. And I had mentioned in the last lecture that the relation between first null beam width is with a half power beam width is about 2.25. Whereas most of the books actually write two times, which is approximately okay. But majority of the time, if you use 2.25, you will see that the results are better. Side lobe levels generally we prefer as less than 20 dB. What is special about 20 dB? 20 dB corresponds to 1%, okay? So that means if I am radiating power in the forward direction, then about 1% of the power will be transmitted in the other direction. And think about, let's say, if we are transmitting through the satellite and we are trying to receive over here. As I mentioned in the last lecture, the beam width required for satellite communication is of the order of almost two degrees. If you make it a broad beam, then it will start receiving signal from the other satellite. Now, if the side lobe levels are very high, then that side lobe also can receive signal from the other satellite even if the side lobe is just about 10 to 12 dB because most of the time for satellite communication we generally have a gain margin of at least 10 dB. Why we keep 10 dB gain margin? Uh, if you have seen TV these days, it's a rainy season, right? So many a time you may notice that if it is raining heavily, uh, you can't see the TV, okay? The reason for that is and especially it is true for the 11 and 14 gigahertz transmission and reception. The reason is that at very high frequency, there is a lot of rain attenuation happens. And why rain attenuation happens? Because water absorbs microwave radiation, just like in a microwave oven when you cook food. So what is the part of the food which gets cooked faster? It is the water in the food. So when microwave radiation impinges on the food, and the water molecules are there, these water molecules start vibrating. And at 2.45 gigahertz, they vibrate at a speed of 2.45 billion times per second. Imagine I'm doing vibration like three, four times per second. So what will happen if something vibrates at 2.45 billion times per second? It will cause friction. That friction cause heating, right? And that is how the food gets heated up. So it's all the water and the microwave radiation can penetrate the food. It can go inside and heat the water molecule. And then that is why the heating is from inside out. Whereas if you want to cook on a normal gas or stove or um, let's say uh, electric stove or maybe an induction cooker, okay? So what that does, that actually cooks from the, let's say, bottom 
and it actually the heating is from outside to inside. So if you try to cook too much, then you may burn the outside. And that is why many a times we do cooking on slow fire so that